When V.S. Naipaul first came to UNIV, he was up in staircase five, which is up there on the top floor. Now, rooms in UNIV 70 years ago were definitely not as good as they are now. Um, for a start, there were no lavatories. If you needed to go to the lavatory in the middle of the night, you had a choice. You could either go to the lavatories at the other end of the college or use the chamber pot in your room. Secondly, they were cold. There might be an electric fire with two bars in it in, the in your living room, and that was your lot. And a great many non-British students remember how cold they got. And for example, just after Naipaul went down, Bob Hawke, the future Prime Minister of Australia, came up here. And Hawke, in his memoirs, remembers how cold he was in the winter. And so Naipaul would have been as well. So although these are lovely 17th century rooms, they're also rather cold 17th century rooms. Now in his second year, Naipaul lived in staircase two, which is up here, again on the top floor. That might have been quite noisy for him because he was directly above the junior common room, that's the students' common room. But once again, it would have been quite chilly, quite basic. But on the other hand, everyone else was in the same position. Now, I should say at this point that those students at UNIV who'd been to public schools had already had several years of cold dormitories. So I guess they were well used to it. I think that when Naipaul came to Oxford, he would have found it quite a culture shock. This is a very different world from Trinidad. Um, for a start, the weather. You're shooting this in October, which is exactly around the time that Naipaul came to UNIV. And it's quite a chilly day, albeit quite sunny. Naipaul would have found England very cold compared to Trinidad. And Oxford also is a cold part of England. We're in a, we're in a river valley. And it does get noticeably cold in other parts of the country. And there would have been the many cultural differences that I think there won't have been very many people from the Caribbean in Oxford at the time. Naipaul really will have been on his own. UNIV was not a particularly upper-class college. There were boys from public schools here, but quite a lot of boys from grammar schools as well. But on the other hand, all of them will have had a similar education. They'll all have had a kind of similar, similar cultural grounding in being brought up in Britain and that won't have been Naipaul's world. And one gets stories that Naipaul pushed in a very good face to the world. His tutor, Peter Bailey, always said how at parties, Naipaul was a very good socialiser, life and soul of the party. You have the impression he slightly hid his true feelings of sometimes being a bit isolated here. Sometimes I think Naipaul could be quite a sort of scratchy person. He was, was throughout his life, I think. And maybe sometimes people felt the sharp edges of his tongue. Um, our head porter at the time was a man called Douglas Millin. Douglas had been a former sergeant major in the Second World War. He had a fairly ripe vocabulary. And I think Naipaul occasionally sort of could answer him back a bit, which is a little surprising for him. And I think probably throughout his life he said what he thought, whatever that was. Um, I think this place was the making of Naipaul. Um, it gave him so many openings, um, even if, as I think said before, academically wasn't stretched that much. He had the resources of Oxford's libraries to play with. He had Blackwell's bookshop. And these are things that he could have used and benefited from. And he was very close to London as well. Um, Naipaul, I think, often seems to talk about himself not being quite sure whether he is Trinidadian, whether he's Indian, whether he's British. I know that he often talks about his sense of kind of rootlessness. And yet I think he had that, sorry, and yet I think coming to Oxford gave him a broadness of vision, an ability to see lots of different things. And that does seem to have been something that stuck with him throughout his life. I met Zavidia in 2015, three years before his death. Um, Peter Bailey, his 
English tutor had died, just died. Um, poor Peter, he had Alzheimer's in his later years and had been in a home. And when he died in 2015, of course, we had to have memorial service here. And I, I went because I was very fond of Peter myself. And I remember the surprise when Naipaul appeared in the chapel and he came with Lady Naipaul and a carer. Now, Naipaul was not a well man at this stage. He was confined to a wheelchair. And in fact, I found myself helping move his wheelchair up and down a few steps. But Naipaul came and he came to tea afterwards and I learnt that from Lady, sorry, I learnt from Lady Naipaul that his doctors had actually specifically advised Naipaul against coming along because it was a bit of a journey to Oxford and it was a cold day, but he came nevertheless. And I spoke to Naipaul a bit about Peter Bailey and Naipaul spoke of him with fondness. And above all, he remembered that Peter had been, as he put it, gentle with him, a rather, rather nice adjective, I thought and rather well chosen. But what came across was that at the end, Naipaul remembered Peter Bailey with affection and had a sense that by coming to Univ, he'd kind of made his peace with us in the end.